Good morning, I'm Neva Reddy Manu, and this is your morning news fix for Wednesday, 22nd of May. In this update, a British man has died after a Singapore Airlines flight from London to Singapore dropped suddenly. The airline says there were 211 passengers and 18 crew on board flight SQ321, including 23 passengers from New Zealand. The 73-year-old man died of a suspected heart attack. Dozens of others have been injured and were met by ambulances when the plane diverted and landed in Bangkok. Passenger Jerry, who was travelling to Australia, told the BBC the plane plunged suddenly and without warning. I ended up hitting my head on the ceiling. My wife did. Some poor people who were walking around ended up doing somersaults. Meanwhile, the first New Zealanders rescued from New Caledonia say they're relieved to be home. The Defence Force C-130 Hercules plane touched down in Auckland late last night carrying 50 passengers. It's one of a number of evacuations taking place over the coming days. Six people have died in the violent unrest in the French island territory, sparked over contested electoral reform. Holidaymakers have reported food shortages, hearing gunshots and seeing plumes of smoke and wrecked cars. Bob and Beverly Jones from Buckland, just outside of Pukekohe, say it's good to be home after eight days in New Caledonia. The plan was five days, so we got three extra days. Yeah, we got one day of holiday and the rest was just chaos. Policymakers are being urged to tread carefully as the Oranga Tamariki Amendment Bill passes its first vote. The divisive bill put forth by Children's Minister Karen Chaw has been criticised by the Waitangi Tribunal, people who have gone through the care system and OT itself. Children's advocacy organisation Voice Whakarongomai says losing legislation to ensure cultural safety is a step backwards. The amount of money MPs raise in donations has come into the spotlight. National MP for New Plymouth, David McLeod, has been stood down for failing to declare nearly $180,000 in candidate donations. Political commentator Grant Duncan says it appears he didn't spend anything close to that amount. He says it's not a question of legality, but rather why he needs all that money. Meanwhile, Green Party MP Darlene Tanner is in hot water again, this time with the Electoral Commission. A paid article about Tana appeared in free lifestyle magazine Verve last May without a promoter statement, as required by electoral laws. Her electoral returns say the embattled Green MP spent almost $2,500 on the article, which ran during the election. Wellington barrister Graham Edgler says a warning is often the consequence here. There is also a question, although we don't have enough facts about it, who paid for the advertisement. Uh, There appear to be some indications it was paid for by the business, but then wasn't declared as a donation. In sport, New Zealand Rugby Players Association boss Rob Nicholl has lambasted the provincial union's proposal for governance reform, which will be voted on at next week's special general meeting. They're threatening to create their own entity via a divorce. The Blues have re-signed prop Offa Tuunga Fasi for an additional two years through until the end of 2026. Finally, New Zealand has qualified one rowing crew for the Paris Olympics at the last chance regatta in Lucerne. Kate Haynes and Alana Sherman came second behind Denmark in the pair. I'm Neva Retimanu and that's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at midday from the Newstalk ZB Newsroom.